John Alexander Rain de Newlands was an English chemist who worked on the development of the periodic table. Newlands was born in London, England, where he became an analytical chemist in 1864. He was the first person to devise a periodic table of elements arranged in the order of their relative atomic weights. In 1865, he published his Law of Octaves, which stated that any given element will exhibit analogous behavior to the eighth element following it in the table. In Newman's table, the elements were ordered by the atomic weights that were known at the time and were numbered sequentially to show their order in 3D. Right here we have John Alexander Rain and Newlands as he is constructing his Alexander Forever periodic table. Here he is, oh hold on, what's that? He has something to say? Should make it round. He says, we should make it round. Yes. Yes. This guy's John Alexander Rain and Newlands and we're gonna go find people and ask them if they know who this guy is. Right Brandon? You know, you guys know who this is? It looks like um, Abraham Lincoln. I have never seen him before in my life. I have no idea. I think it might be George W. Bush. Maybe his grandfather. Brother George Washington. Looks like a mix of Teddy Roosevelt and somebody else. Is he a president of the United States? The president, like right now? No. Somebody is smarter than I. Somebody is smarter than I. On your popcorn bag? Uh, is that my grand? Is that grandpa? You know who this is? I uh, have you guys know this is John Alexander Rain and Newlands. All right. Really? Oh yeah. my God! I know that. <laughs> right. This is John Alexander Rain and Newlands. Who is John Alexander Rain and Newlands? This guy is uh, John Alexander Rain and Newlands. John Alexander Rain and Newlands. What? This is John Alexander Rain and Newlands. <laughs> he is John Alexander Rain and Newlands. Uh, John Alexander Reyna Newlands. Okay, right. Let's let's bring in what he made. He created the Alexander Periodic Table. You know what he did? No. All right. What he did was produce the Alexander Periodic Table. Do you see anything similar to the other periodic table? Yes. And that might be symbols. The symbols. Anything other than that? No. Not even the shape. That's the difference between his uh, periodic table. It's three-dimensional and it shows the relations between the trends and uh, in the elements and also the blocks of the orbitals. And like, well, the, the special shape is meant to uh, differentiate the isotopes and orbitals, you know, the blocks and whatnot, and show the relationships between the elements. That's why it's curved and continuous. Do you see any similarities? I can see the same chemical. Do you see anything that you recognize on here? Colored by orbital blocks. Um, there's uh, isotopes of hydrogen. It shows relations between the isotopes and orbitals. An isotope is a different version of uh, an element that has a different number of neutrons. Oh, okay. Right, right. Why did they ball it all up? Why did they ball it all up? Well, it's uh, it gives you more information on it. Uh, it shows the connection between the orbitals and isotopes and the different blocks, of course. They're shaded in different colors. And the relations between the elements. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't, I'm wondering why I didn't learn this when I took chemistry. <laughs> Do you see anything you might be able to use from this that is not you know, present in the normal periodic table that we see? No. None? No. All right, well, thank you for your time. From Dr. Fisher, we have six no's, one yes, and one symbols. What, what is the assignment today? Uh, well, we're making a 3D uh, Alexander Forever model of the periodic table. Uh, what makes this model different from the general periodic table we see? So pretty much it's a, three, it's a 3D spiral formation, so all the elements uh, line up and so it can turn so all the elements match. Uh, which shows their relationship and with properties in um, number of el electrons. Hi, Gio. Hello. How are you today? Doing well. So, what did you accomplish here? 
Well, we made a large model, large size model of the periodic table. What this is really doing is it's showing that all the high energy, um, or what do you call it, the larger atoms with the higher energy are lower. Their energy levels, or basically all of period seven, would be on the bottom. You would go up from the model, you would see basically a decrease in electrons. And this was supposed to originally show the F block, the S block, the D blocks, and the P blocks. However, we adjusted it so that it could fit. And is this just any periodic table or something special? What is it? Well, as I mentioned before, it was originally planned to be the Alexander periodic table so that it can show the uh, S or SPDF box. However, now it's more shaped like a cone so that we can fit everything. Uh, why did you assign this Alexander periodic table project? To make my students' life a miserable hell. Oh! Sounds like a good teacher. What, what did you plan for them to learn from this project? Well, let's see. I think there are three things that come in teaching now. It is for students to get a content, problem solving, and because a lot of students want to be engineers, so they need to learn how to design and implement, a, implement that design. And you thought this project would be ideal to hit all of those three points? I wouldn't say ideal because obviously students want to follow the directions because the boxes were all different sizes. But um, I think it really does show whether or not they have the capacity and the uh, ability to think outside the box and to that metaphorical learning box. And so I think the students were able to achieve that.